So this is lesson 3-5, which is zeros of polynomial functions. Our essential question is, how are the zeros of a polynomial function related to a function's equation and graph? So our first example says, what are the zeros of f of x equals x times x minus 4 times x plus 3, and then we're going to graph the function. Okay, so first of all, the zeros, using the zero product property, is what's going to make each of the factors equal zero. So first we have just an x by itself, so that means that zero would be a zero. Then we have x minus 4, so what number would make that equal zero? That would be positive 4. And then finally we have x plus 3, so the zero would be negative 3. So then what we need to find out is from those points, we can make kind of like a little number line. Doesn't really need to be an exact number line. We know that these are our three zeros. So we want to know what's going to happen in each interval. So you can take a number like negative five, plug it in, and you find out you get a negative number out. If I take like negative one in my next interval, plug it in, we get a positive. If I plug in one, I get negative, and if I plug in like positive 5 or 10, I get a positive value. So that tells me what the shape of my graph is going to look like. So I'm going to plot over here. So I know we're going to go through 0, 4, and negative 3. And I know kind of what the direction of my graph is going to look like. But then if I want to accurately sketch the graph, I might want to make a little table and plug in the values that are going to be halfway between. So if we look at halfway between um, 0 and negative 3 would be negative 1.5. And if I plug that into my equation, I get 12.375. Okay, and then halfway between 0 and 4 would be 2, positive 2. So if I plug in positive 2, I get negative 20. So I'm going to make these go by 10s. Okay, so we know that between, so at negative 1.5, we're at 12, so we're like right about there. And then at 2, we're at negative 20, so we're down there. So then you can kind of sketch in what the picture of your graph is going to look like based off of your positive-negative chart, your zeros, and then plugging in to find the local mins and maxes, the local extrema. Okay, so that's example one. Our next example is talking about multiple zeros. So this is called multiplicity. So it says, how does a multiple zero affect the graph of a polynomial? So multiplicity is when you have a factor that appears more than once. So for example, if I have x times x minus 3 squared, that means my zeros would be 0 and 3, and we can write m2 to show it has a multiplicity of 2. So what's important to know with multiplicity is that if you have an even multiplicity, it's going to have a turning point at the x-axis or kind of like bounce off of the x-axis. If it's an odd multiplicity, then it's going to cross the x-axis. So like this example right here, it's going to cross through 0, but it's going to bounce off of 3. So what that would look like is kind of like that. Um, if you have, you can have a higher multiplicity. So we could have, um, maybe if we even change this one up here, like if this had been x cubed, then that would have a multiplicity of 3. It's still going to pass through 0. It just what it means for the graph is it kind of turns into a inflection point. So kind of flattens the crossing the x-axis out a little bit at that point. 
So again, multiplicity is when you have multiple zeros that are the same. Okay, example three is to find all the real and complex zeros of the polynomial graph function shown in the graph. So what we're going to do is we can look at the graph. So technology can help us a lot with these types of problems. So we're going to look at the graph and we notice that it looks like it's crossing at positive two. And we have a function down here as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start out with synthetic division. So I have one, one, negative three, negative six, and we're going to use two to check because we can see from the graph it looks like it passes through two. So if I bring down the one, this would be two, three, six, three, six. So that worked. So that means that two is a zero. So now what I'm left with is x squared plus three x plus three. So from that, we can't factor that. We know that we can't factor it because if you look at the picture of the graph, you can tell that the graph is not crossing the x-axis in any other spot except for two. So that what that tells me is that my remaining two zeros are going to be complex zeros. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So this would be negative three plus or minus the square root of three squared minus four times one times three over two times one. Okay, so if I simplify this, I'm gonna get negative three plus or minus the square root of negative three over two. Well, we don't want the negative underneath the square root, so we would write this as negative three plus or minus the square root of three i over two. So we can break that up into a real part and imaginary part as well. So our zeros would be positive two, negative three halves plus the square root of three over two i, and negative three halves minus the square root of three over two i. So those are all of our zeros for that polynomial. Okay, and our last example for this is to solve the polynomial inequality by graphing. So we have the graph over here. Um, I wanna talk about how we can first start with the equation to find the zeros. So we have x cubed minus 16x. So I can factor out an x, which would be x squared minus 16. And then x squared minus 16 is a difference of squares. So this would be x times x plus four times x minus four. So you can see this would be zero, negative four, positive four are three zeros. And you can see that applies on our graph here. We're crossing at negative four, zero, and positive four. So the graph over here is color coded. It says the blue portions show where our function is greater than zero and the red portions show where it's less than zero. So you'll notice in this question, it's asking us where is our polynomial less than zero. So we're focused on the red part of the graph. So this would be from negative infinity to negative four and I'm gonna use a curved bracket because it's just asking where is it less than zero, not less than or equal to. If it had said or equal to, then I would use a square bracket around the negative four. Okay, and then between zero and positive four. Again, curved brackets. So those would be the intervals where my graph is less than zero. Okay, so that is it for lesson three five.